So uh, thank you very much uh, for coming. So, so this is uh, actually a joint work uh, uh, with uh, Geomagical, a, a startup uh, doing mobile AR in California. So Jan Fengin and Yasin Alami are, are from this uh, company. I'm between the University of Zaragoza, the two Javiers in the, in the offers, Javier Dominguez Conti and Javier Sivera, that is me. Uh, we are from the University of Zaragoza. So uh, the motivation for our, uh, for our work is uh, visual, the initialization of visual inertial tracking systems. So uh, this initialization is, is challenging. So the, uh, basically the problem is the, uh, the most accurate uh, visual inertial tracking systems are based on nonlinear optimization. So given, given, a, given a state, they iteratively refine it. So for them, you, you, you need an initial seed. This initial seed has to be computed at, at, the, at the bootstrapping of the system. And at the bootstrapping, you have a few data, few visual and inertial data. So this can be uh, problematic. You, have, uh, you can have uh, the generate uh, configurations there, and, and, it, and it is quite, uh, quite challenging. The thing is, uh, on top of being challenging, we think that uh, this initialization is quite relevant for, uh, for augmented reality, because uh, the existing systems uh, have uh, initialization failures. Uh, some of them, they might require some tedious user calibration procedures that, that are also bad and, and can also have uh, large delays. So all of these factors ruin the user experience and then, well, if, if, uh, if you are working in an app that uses one of these visual inertial tracking systems, maybe the user is, is, uh, is tired of your app and, and uninstall it uh, like very soon. So yeah, I wanted to show you a, a, a video of, uh, of one of the uh, state-of-the-art visual inertial tracking systems and, and show you how initialization is a problem here. So you are seeing here uh, the image uh, taken by a, well, taken by a quadrotor actually. Uh, you have here the estimation uh, and you have here some text saying that uh, the initialization has not happened yet. So in this system, actually, the initialization goes in two stages. First, only the camera is used, and this, then after a while, when we have, uh, when this system have in, in enough information, uh, everything is, is, uh, is initialized and the IMU is also contributing to the, to the tracking. So you are going to see that uh, it takes quite a lot of time for the system to be initialized for this, uh, text here to change to, to fully initialize, actually around 10 years. So this is a quite, a quite a long time. Not there yet. And now it's, it's initialized. So you can see that this might be, might be a, a problem. I chose this particular system actually because, well, this, uh, the authors are colleagues from, from my lab, so they, they won't get uh, angry at me uh, about, uh, about criticizing their, their system. But actually, yeah, all the state-of-the-art uh, visual inertial tracking systems have one or some of these, of these problems up to up to certain extent. So it, it, it's kind of problematic in, in, every, in every system. So what we are going to, uh, to propose, what we presented, what we actually uh, developed, and, and it is in the paper, an initialization procedure that is uh, more robust, most accurate, and with uh, smaller delays than, than the uh, state of the art. So uh, for that, we use visual and inertial data. So about the visual data, we use tracked features in, from the images. So we use actually Citomacy points for, for a better uh, accuracy, and we track them in the sequence using, uh, using Canada Lucas Tomasi algorithm. For the inertial, we use the raw, the raw measurements. And actually, with the feature tracks and with the raw inertial measurements, what we build is a linear system for which we can compute a, a closed form uh, solution. And actually, yeah, this kind of initialization, that there are several types of initialization for, for systems, algorithms for visual inertial tracking. Uh, for these ones uh, based on, uh, on, on linear equation systems, the state of the art is more or less is quite represented by these two works. So our improvement over them is uh, to extending their formulation to, uh, to be able to initialize feature tracks for, from any frames in the initialization sequence. 
So you can see here that if we are going to initialize one of these visual inertial tracking systems from, from the sequence, if we start, if we extract uh, salient features here and we track them in sequence, little by little we are going to get uh, moving out from the original position and the tracks are going to be lost and new areas are going to, to appear. So if we can only consider these tracks initialized in this first image, we are going to run out of tracks or the features are not evenly spread and this is bad for the, uh, for the estimation. So in our formulation, we are able to initialize new tracks, these blue ones here, and track them over the, the sequence so features are, are, are more spread and then the initialization is, is better. Actually, this, this can be better seen in this, this figure from, from our experiments. So in this figure, you can see the initialization error here and the number of frames that you are considering to initialize your system in this other axis. So you can see more or less that there are three, three regions. The first one of them is a region of high error and this is because of the fact that uh, when you start moving, the camera hasn't moved enough uh, and in order to triangulate features, you, have, you, you need enough camera motion, uh, enough parallax. So this is bad for initialization. Then as time goes on and, and your camera starts moving enough, then you can triangulate uh, visual features accurately enough and then you are here in a low error area that is nice for initialization. But when you, uh, well, when you extend your initialization uh, for long enough, then what happens is that if you consider visual and inertial data uh, together, the inertial data is going to accumulate drift. So this drift gets into your uh, initialization uh, linear system and again the error starts uh, growing again. So yeah, ideally you would like to initialize your system being in this uh, low basing, low, low error basing uh, area. But the problem is this, uh, you never know where this uh, low error basing is because it depends on the camera motion. Of course, if you move uh, slower, this uh, high error area extends for more. It depends also on, on the scene depth. It depends on the distribution of the tracks over the, over the image. It depends on, on the sensor specs. So it's quite difficult to, to predict. And uh, while well, extending the number of using more tracks and being able to initialize tracks from, from any frames, for any frame in this, in this initialization sequence, what we achieve is uh, being able to extend this uh, lower or basing. So you see here, uh, this red curve here shows the error when you use the tracks, the feature tracks from the, from the first frame. When you are able to add tracks, uh, if you add tracks just once, the, this is this blue error and you can see that the lower area extends more. And you, if you initialize feature twice, then the lower area extends even more, right? So this is what we are going to, to gain over the state of the art. So, sorry for the maths, but uh, I will try to sketch uh, uh, where does this initialization come, come from or how, how it is done very briefly. All the gory details are in the, are in the paper. We made our best in the paper to, to explain every, every step. So basically, uh, uh, the, I mean, the equations are based in, in, a very, in a very simple geometric observation. So you, we have our camera here moving, this is the first frame of the, of the sequence. So if we take any two frames that are seeing a common point, this triangle here is what gives us the, the linear constraint that we are going to use for initialization. So this is the camera translation from time tj to time tk to two times instant. And this is equal to this vector here from the first camera position to the point minus this vector here from the second camera position to the, to the point. This is this, uh, this equation here. So this, uh, from here, uh, this mu is the back projection ray from the, from the uh, image feature to the 3D space, so this is known. And this lambda is the feature depth, which, which is, it, is, it is not known. Then uh, again, for the second camera, it's the same. Mu is this ray, and the lambda is the, the, the depth of the, of the feature that is unknown. And this uh, thing here is the camera translation that is unknown. So this camera translation, we can put it in this uh, form, uh, the initial velocity uh, multiplied by the time plus the integration of the acceleration. So from the IMU, we can get something uh, similar to the acceleration, uh, but with the accelerometer bias and the, and the gravity. 
So we can use the acceler accelerometer meter, the accelerometer, accelerometer measurements to modify a bit this equation and transform it into this one, being this S, the pre-integration of all your uh, uh, accelerometer measurements. We can transform, manipulate a bit more these, these equations, taking into account that the uh, camera and the IMU are not coincident, so they, have, uh, they, they are apart, but we know this intrins extrinsic sorry, calibration, so they are related by a rotation and a translation. And we can also modify this BJ here to put it into, uh, to make it dependent uh, of the velocity as, at time one and then times this sum here that is actually also the pre-integration of the accelerometer data. So with all of this, uh, we end up with this equation, which actually looks pretty, pretty ugly, but it is uh, basically this one, but with some manipulations. And in this, in this equation, this is a linear constraint. We have only four unknowns, which are the gravity at, uh, at the first time instant, the velocity of the first time instant, and then the depth of the point that we were looking from the two cameras, but yeah, the depth from the, one, from the first camera, the depth from the, from the second camera. All the rest is known and can be computed from the IMU pre-integration, from feature back projection, or from the IMU camera extrinsic uh, calibration. So this, uh, this equation is linear because we made some assumptions. So this is, these are the, the two here. So uh, you can see here that, uh, well, we have, to trans we have to take into account the transformation between the first and the second camera, and these rotations are, uh, if we estimate them, the equation becomes nonlinear. So actually in this equation, we take that from the gyroscope. So if we have a bad gyroscope, this equation won't be very accurate. And also, uh, this equation assumes that the bias is known. So in some systems, that might be true, but not in others, if we want to initialize on the fly. This, is, this was not a problem in our, in our observation because the accelerometer bias effect is negligible uh, in these uh, small subsequences that we, are, that we are taking. And the gyro bias can be estimated uh, with a nonlinear optimization after, this, uh, after, the, after solving this linear equation system. So, well, with this linear constraint for a pair of cameras or for, and for one point, uh, if we have many points and many camera points, we can construct a, a, a linear equation system. We can solve it uh, with, with, with any solver. Uh, actually, this system is quite sparse, so we can, take, uh, we can exploit that fact and, and, and solve it uh, quite efficiently. And that's it for the initialization side. Uh, once you have a, an, an initialization seed for the visual inertial state, uh, what you can do is a nonlinear optimization after that to further refine this, uh, this seed. So there, uh, we, we used, uh, I mean, we, we encoded the, the visual inertial state uh, with this. Maybe the main contribution here is, is just adding the, the, the observable angles uh, of, the, of the gravity to the, to the visual inertial state vector. But uh, for the rest, we, we do a pretty standard uh, state-of-the-art visual inertia and nonlinear optimization. Uh, minimizing uh, visual inertial residuals actually as proposed by, by Forster in this, uh, in this paper here. So let's go with the, with the results. Uh, we used uh, the EUROC uh, data set uh, for evaluating our system. We used it actually because it is a public data set so uh, everybody can compare their algorithm against ours. So it, uh, it contains 11 sequences of a quadrotor flying in, a, in, in two rooms and yeah, it has visual and inertial data. So uh, actually we took all the sequences, we extracted several subsequences every 20 frames to have many sequences, and for each of these subsequences we tested uh, a different uh, number of frames for initialization, so we have a lot of, uh, we did a lot of evaluation. The results are, are in this table, it's uh, uh, pretty hard to see something here. Mm but many things to comment. Maybe the most important is that our initialization system is successful in almost every case. These cases here are actually quite, uh, I would say, unsolvable because they are cases, these are cases that, uh, sorry. These are cases where uh, from the first frame and the second frame, there is no common features. So actually it, it, it is unsolvable with, with this uh, algorithm that we, that we devised. 
Uh, this is different from the state of the art. I mean, the state of the art is unsuccessful in, in, in some cases. Uh, regarding the error, uh, we always also reduce the error compared of the state of the art because of having more tracked features. And uh, yeah, also maybe it's important to remark here the, the error metric that we are considering is the normalized root mean square error. So we divide the root mean square error by the length of the trajectory to have uh, an error that is normalized with the trajectory length. And uh, you can see here that with a small number of frames, we are in the uh, high error area. So we have very high errors, 100%. Uh, I mean, error in the same magnitude of the trajectory, this is pretty high. But here we have uh, smaller errors, and actually in our, exper in our experiments, everything under 30% converges quite nicely. So we can say that in around two seconds, our system is, is initialized. Sorry, I don't know what happened. These glitches. So uh, yeah, uh, I would like to show you in this video two examples of two cases of this initialization that we found, comparing it with the with the state of. So this is one. Ex Sorry, this is. Yeah, now, so this is uh, the state of the initialization features only in the first frame and then tracking. And this is our system that can reinitialize at any, at any frame when there is not enough features. So you are going to see here that this, uh, this number gets slower in this case than in, than in this case, although this is in principle uh, also estimating some trajectory with bigger error, but not so off. And the second case that we encounter is, is of course, when, when the motion is very aggressive and then uh, you lose tracks of the, of, the, of the original features, we are able to initialize more, and then you are going to see that here we arrive at a small errors, but here the initialization is actually failed because, yeah, at the very beginning you don't have motion and then you stop having tracks, so you cannot uh, initialize. So finally, about the nonlinear optimization results, this is maybe uh, less explored than the, than the other part. What we, the experiment we did here is that starting from the uh, initial seed, if we can achieve a better solution using nonlinear optimization. So this is actually a, an accumulated histogram of the error. So this is the error in centimeters, and this is the percentage uh, of the, the ratio of cases that, have, that has uh, under this, this error. So uh, this curve here, the more at the left they are, the better they are. So you can see that from these errors here, we are able to improve to here after nonlinear uh, optimization. So that was, uh, that was all. So as a conclusion, yeah, visual inertial state initialization is, is challenging. What we, uh, what we did in, in this work is to extend this formulation of Kaiser and, and, and Martinelli to uh, be able to initialize from, uh, from any intermediate frames in an initialization uh, sequence. So we have performed the the state of the art, and also we have proposed a, a, state, uh, a state representation including gravity from non -linear, for nonlinear optimization. So, yeah, finally, just shameless advertising. Sorry, Geomagical has a high respect for people at Ismar, so they insisted in, in telling, uh, in, for me, in telling that, that they are hiring. So, if you are interested, please check there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, do any of you have questions? None? Okay. Well, then, thank you very much. I hope we get to see this system soon in uh, mobile devices everywhere. We'll try, yeah. Thank you.